It's finally happened. I have now finally completed the Wild Hearts story. I sat there, I contemplated it, and then yesterday I just completely decided that I would sit down and finish the Soul Stalker and Grim Quill quest no matter how long it took. And it took a while. The Soul Stalker hunt actually wasn't that bad. <laughs> and that's probably because I was abusing Clawblade and apparently Glider spam on Clawblade really is just busted because, uh, yeah, I think it took me two tries. It wasn't bad at all. I could dodge all of his stuff. Even if I wasn't using Glider spam, it's Clawblade either way. Soul Stalker doesn't really have a lot that can hit up, and I was up all of the time. So, the Soul Stalker one really wasn't too much. I thought he was cool, he was a fun fight. Um, even though I had like no risk, it still was pretty fun. Let's talk about Grim Quill. That shit's fucking stupid. I wanted to do this solo. Uh, it's kind of a big thing for me, even though I did play through the entire story with a buddy, I still have been able to kill them all solo. And it's for some reason just a big thing for me to be able to at least say that I can kill everything solo, or have killed everything solo, but fuck Grim Quill, I, oh, I almost went into online and just said fuck it, but then I was like, well no, because if I'm struggling this much, other people are going to be struggling this much, it's insane. Grim Quill is a fucking stupid fucking hunt. He's extremely fast. He has no fucking damage opportunities unless you use your wall, which even then you don't get that much. And I want to talk about this fucker. <laughs> it's stupid. So, the first thing I want to say is I started out trying to beat him with Clawblade, because Clawblade is what I have used pretty much this entire time. It's what I've killed every single monster with my first time. Yeah, that that didn't go so well. Apparently with Clawblade, you just are fucked against Grim Quill. There's no way to actually have a safe opportunity to get your big hit off, and then if you can't get your big hit off, you're just going to run out of time because he also doesn't give you enough opportunity to do your slashes for an extended period of time. It was rough. It wasn't fun. So then I decided I would go to Nodachi. You know, it's pretty strong right now with the torch exploit, bug, whatever you want to call it. It's pretty strong, and it seems like one of the better ways to actually kill Grimquill. Uh, while... It definitely performed better because I actually had access to building Kitakuri, which with the claw blade you really don't. Because if you are landing, you build the Kitakuri, you still don't have that much time. I think the fastest you can actually get your big hit off is around 7 seconds. By the 7th second, you are getting hit by whatever Grim Quill has decided to throw out that time. So then, with Nadachi, I felt better about it. I was doing better, I was playing better, I feel like I was getting him very low. I actually got him to Enrage, which with the Clawblade I just could not. But it still wasn't perfect, it was extremely stressful, it was hard, it didn't really... It constantly felt like an uphill battle, and while... I do definitely think I could have beaten Grim Quill with the Nodachi. I decided I wanted to do something more fun. So that's when I started farming. I went out and had a specific build in mind. So I went out and I farmed a whole bunch of Amaterasu, some of the final boss, some Lava Back, some... Uh, spore tail for some parts that I needed that I just didn't have, and I'm talking low rank spore tail. And then I farmed a ton of grit dog because I needed a specific talisman. And the build I'm talking about is the Kitakiri Katana Blade Debar Kitakiri Fusion Spam. 
And while I'm not 100% um, happy that this is how I beat it, I'm at least proud to say I beat it. <laughs> while I could have beaten it with the Nodachi, I kind of wanted to see how far you can really take the Kitty Kitty top spam. Because who doesn't love just throwing Beyblades at something waiting for it to die? And so that's what I did. I loaded up the map with a whole bunch of Tsukumo Celestial Shrines. I think I got five? Yeah, I think I got five of them. I went out and actually got the Katakuri top because, funny enough, I don't have every single Katakuri fusion unlocked because I don't really change my <laughs> basic Katakuri. And so, I went out. I farmed up all that I needed to make the build, and I just decided to try. So the first time was pretty rough. Uh, I forgot to eat, which was very apparent, and with the fox's food that you get from having them in their pens, you can get like an extra 17% more blade to bar, which is uh, it's a healthy chunk. So I was running out of thread a lot faster than I thought I should be. Needless to say, I then died. And it was pretty quick and painless. Because, well, I didn't eat. So then the second time, after, you know, I went and farmed more Grit Dog, because Grit Dog is the only kimono that drops any form of Blade to Bar and... Oh, what is it? Oh, what the hell is that skill? Kitty Fury or something like that? I don't know. It's the only one that drops a blade to bar. So I was just trying to farm out as much blade to bar as I could to get up to as high a number as I could, even though it is a little temperamental with it and it's not. I, I'm curious if it has some sort of internal cooldown because it doesn't, if you have 90%, you can't just continuously spam it. You will eventually use up all of your thread, even though you have 90% chance to just save on your thread. So I'm, I'm curious if that does have an internal cooldown. It wouldn't really surprise me if it does, because it seems like it'd be broken otherwise. So after farming about five or so grit dog, I went back because my celestial shrines were ready and active, and I decided to do it again, and I forgot to eat again. So uh, this one was kind of a, a wash, you know? It went a little better, um, I did try to use the Kitakiri Katana mostly to just generate thread, but I don't actually know the proper way to generate the thread because I am not a Katana main. I don't know what attacks really get the thread other than maybe the Unbound, which I was struggling to get. So, after the second time dying, I went back, I farmed even more Grit Dog, because, I mean, I had nothing else to do. I was waiting for my Celestial Shrines to get their charge back. I even decided to take a shower, because it was then that I realized that the Celestial Shrines are not hunt-based. They are entirely time-based, which is interesting to me. But, yeah, so that brings us to the third hunt, which I was feeling good about this one. Why? Because I realized the Beyblades just were not working. They are hilarious, they are fantastic, but they did not do enough damage for a solo hunter to spam them out and be able to actually kill a deeply volatile kimono with how much threat I had, which was probably a good like 200 to 300 thread to work with. So I went to the next best thing in terms of damage. Well, the best thing in terms of damage, the next best thing in terms of fun. I just cannon spammed. I just said, fuck it, this man is going to die. I am going to hit him with every single celestial cannon that I can make. And after playing a little bit like a, you know, like a scumbag, you know, abusing the cliff that he can't hit you on, and really making use of that entire time frame. I think it came down to the last five minutes, and I was very stressed. Uh, it took me 
I want to say... It, it took me almost 18 minutes to beat this hunt. And that's because, again, I'm not comfortable with the Kirikiri Katana, so... If I ran out of thread, I would hop up on the cliff and just wait for the uh, gatherable nodes to respawn. Or wait for my Celestial Breath to give me enough thread. Or just smack them in the face and hope I can generate thread from that to be able to make another cannon. But holy shit, after those 18 minutes, I felt so accomplished because I still killed him with the Kirikiri Top. I did it! He was about to charge up, he was gonna run at me, and I smacked him in the face with the Kirikiri top. I just... God, I'm so fucking happy I am done with this story and I can actually start farming out the talismans that I need. I'm never hunting Grimquill again, because that's a fucking hole. Oh, I also don't think he dropped anything great. I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't drop anything great. Oh, but man... I'm finally done. I can finally say I am a actual Wild Hearts content creator because I have completed every single quest. It only took me, what, 138 hours to complete? I know, it's a low playtime. I don't play this game a lot. A lot of my playing is recording a thing or just making something fun. So now what? You know, I finished the story. Well. I'm gonna keep making content, it seems to be the only content that does really well on my channel, but I still plan to make other videos and stuff, I'm not limiting myself to Wild Hearts because they get views, but clearly people like watching it and so I will continue to make it. The other day I posted to Reddit, hoping to see if people had some funny, meme not so meta, but not so off meta builds that they would be willing to share that could be fun and could make for a YouTube video, so I will pose that same question here. If you have anything fun, anything stupid, anything that shouldn't work but just does, and it doesn't have to be like competitive in a speedrun meta, it just needs to be able to obtain a kill time, right? Because like, I, like, beating my Asmic Grimquill with cannons was not the fastest way to do that. The fastest way to do that would be to just to get good, hunt it four or five more times with the Nodachi, and then actually kill it. But no, I wanted to take a fun route for a build I've kind of wanted to make for a long time, and just spam cannons on it. So yeah, if you have some builds, please leave it in the comments. I would love to test them out. I will absolutely give you credit for them, or if you just don't want me to make a video on it, I won't either. We can have a nice little just collection of fun builds, because the only thing that's going to save this game is the community banding together and just letting new people come in and really try out some stupid silly stuff. Because I'm no speedrunner, and I never will be a speedrunner. I don't really have the patience for that to learn everything and get everything perfect. I respect all the speedrunners, I think their content is hilarious, but that is not my type of content. So it's been done. I have finally beaten the Wild Hearts story, and I now can farm out all of the talismans, which is going to be a nice couple hundred hours of work to get everything I want. So I hope you enjoyed. I don't know, I'm really excited and I just had to like say it, so this may not be a great video, but I'm really happy. I did it. I hope you all enjoyed. I wish you all the best of luck in the next hunts. If you would like to see the Blade to Bar build that I ended up beating my Asmic Grim Quill with, I can show that to you. Um, it's nothing special, it really is just your basic grab as much blade to bar as you can, and then go ham. I will say, after beating my Asmic Grimquill, I did get a pretty, pretty fucking shit talisman. I believe it had Stand Tall and Rapid Rescue. How wonderful is that? Not at all. I was trying to sign off the video. Uh, 
Oh, I'm so happy. Anyway, I wish you all the best of luck in your next hunts, and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.